shockwaves reverberating beyond the sports world this morning about the disturbing story coming from the NFL. Miami guard Richie Incognito has been suspended, accused of bullying and tormenting fellow teammate Jonathan Martin, including using racial epithets. He left hate-filled voicemails threatening to kill Martin. We're not going to read you the text from the voicemail, but you can see there the level of harassment. Martin left the team last week after Incognito and others taunted him repeatedly. The Dolphins have asked the NFL to investigate, and their coach is promising to take action. I will tell you that if the review shows that this is not uh, a safe atmosphere, I will take whatever measures are necessary to ensure that it is. Now, the Players Association just released this statement, quote, We expect that the NFL and its clubs create a safe and professional workplace for all players, that owners, executives, coaches, and players should set the best standards and examples. It is the duty of this union to hold the clubs and teams accountable for safety and professionalism in the workplace. As the representative organization of all players, the NFLPA will insist on a fair investigation for all involved. I'm joined now by Leah Lagos, a sports psychologist. Thanks for coming in. Good to see you. You know, you don't think when you hear bullying of 300 pound uh, football players being the victims, um, but Martin says this harassment has been going on for at least a year, year and a half. What do we know about bullying in sports and, and is it generally age limited? Bullying commonly occurs amongst rookie players, and we know that it's been long a part of the football culture, but that doesn't mean that teasing and taunting doesn't cause these men psychological distress. Well, we're talking about things like freshman hazing, and we've seen examples over the last days of uh, rookies being forced to pick up exorbitant dinner tabs, that the, the veterans will go in and they'll order $1,500, $2,000 bottles of wine. They say it's about camaraderie. They say it's about building a team. What do you say? I say this is more performance inhibiting than performance motivating. If these things are happening in a social context, lunch rooms, locker rooms, out to dinner, they're actually socially alienating particular players and then they're expected to go back on the field and have a great performance. That great performance becomes less and less likely as they become more alienated by teams. You know, it's interesting, this statement from the NFL Players Association. They say that they're going to insist on a fair investigation for all involved. And people say there are two sides to this story. And we're already hearing it, particularly from some other NFL players and former NFL players. Um, in spite of the fact that Incognito has a history of bad behavior, he was once named the NFL's dirtiest player player uh, and then we've seen all these threatening emails that have surfaced there are people who are saying you know it's kind of like boys will be boys take a listen to this 99 percent of the people in society wouldn't last a uh, practice in the nfl it's it's not the people the men in the nfl are a, a different a different animal a different kind of person they're both offensive linemen the amount of time they spend together uh, essentially, they're brothers, and and you know the stuff that happens inside a family is the stuff that happens inside of a family. You you can't take what happens inside of a family and put it on the large stage and expect it to meet societal criteria. It, it doesn't work like that. I don't know what to extrapolate out of that. Some people might say, I guess that means if uh, you know your your husband beats you, then that that's all in the family. I mean, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but do you think that there is some legitimacy to what he had to say? two sides. One, we have to look at is this impairing the health and the safety of particular individuals because that crosses the line towards abuse. And the second is team accountability. If this is a family, then what are the standards within this family, the norms for identifying and reporting risk behaviors such as abuse on the team? Do you think that there's a bigger picture here that, that when we see these kind of high profile things that it does send a message that goes far beyond locker rooms, far beyond sports? Could we get, could this help us get to the point where bullying becomes as unacceptable as drunk driving is? Yes, but I also believe that the standards need to be set within the team. The team norms discussed, set by team captains, discussed by the head coaches, and that there is a specific kind of communication strategy here that can be used to enhance the care on the team. Leah Lagos, sports psychologist, thanks so much for coming in. My pleasure.